Hello everyone and welcome to the first day of the Skilling Open, uh, the first day on the $1.5 million uh, Champions Chester and we're starting off with a game uh, between Yanni Pomnici and Magnus Carlsen, already uh, a crazy one uh, to, to start off the the coverage with and uh, we're gonna uh, say a few words about the tournament as it's uh, something we always do when we first start covering a tournament so like i said skilling open i uh, want 1.5 million dollars for the entire champions chester it will be a 16 player single round robin and then uh, after half of them uh, are eliminated then we go into the remaining eight players so for this tournament uh, the prize fund is one hundred thousand dollars with a thirty thousand dollars first prize all games are played online on chess 24 uh, and the time control is 15 minutes for all moves uh, and a 10 second increment starting uh, with move one. So uh, from the beginning of the game, no draw offers are allowed uh, before move 40. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, the, the top eight players will also be invited uh, to the next event uh, of this uh, chess, chess tour. So, uh, without further ado, let's check out the game. Like I said, Yanni Pomnici versus Magnus Carlsen, and Nepo opens with e4. Uh, sorry about that. And we will have uh, a very, very interesting line of the Rui Lopez called uh, the Cozio Defense. And uh, I don't think we've ever covered a game uh, by, uh, where the Cozio Defense was played other than the game my brother-in-law <laughs> brother played against uh, uh, Garry Kasparov in the simultaneous exhibition. Uh, but uh, we're going we're gonna to get to that. So knight of three, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Uh, the Rui Lopez is on the board. Uh, and now knight uh, b to e7. Knight g to e7, the Cozio Defense is on the board. And if you're interested in the game, uh, Coronaldinho played against Kasparov. Uh, it will be the first link in the description below. Uh, so knight to c3 and knight to g6. So it's a very, uh, very old line, very unexplored line. Uh, you will not see it played on the on the top level. But now, like I said, with uh, most games nowadays being online and pretty much everything is blitz and rapid, uh, players are starting to look into some uh, you know uh, lines that would not be suitable for for over the board uh, classical play. Uh, so knight g6 and the d4 striking in the center, e captures knight captures on d4 and now bishop to c5 by Magnus. Bishop to b4 is a known move in this position, however bishop to c5 has never been played uh, so it is as of move 6 already that we have a completely new game. Uh, Nepo continues with developing bishop to e3 adds another defender to the knight and here uh, Magnus prepared bishop captures on d4. So we have bishop captures uh, and now queen to g5, putting pressure on g2 and already Magnus is giving Nepo an opportunity to make a mistake. Uh, for example, if you if you just uh, think everything is perfectly fine and you castle here, you will very soon lose the game uh, because just knight captures on d4. Queen captures and now the incredibly strong knight to h4, you're threatening checkmate and there's no way to, to avoid getting checkmated uh, because if you play g3 to block it, knight f3 check picks up the queen uh, as uh, we have a nice fork here. So uh, only move 8, but already a lot of poison to the position. Uh, so Nepo figures it out. He plays g3, doesn't allow any trickery. Uh, and here Magnus just trades. Knight captures on d4, queen captures, and now knight to e5. Again, going for knight of 3 check, uh, which will uh, win the queen. So bishop back to e2, Nepo gains control of the f3 square. And now knight back to c6 by Magnus, attacking Nepo's queen, queen to c4, and now d6, preparing to bring the light square bishop into the game. So first knight to d5, now threatening knight c7 check uh, to, win, to win the rook here, and Magnus just goes back, queen back to d8. So uh, this knight, uh, you know, came a long way. He's quite the traveler. Queen also uh, brought back all the way to the starting square. It's a very interesting line. And here Nepo goes queen c3, kind of forcing Magnus to castle kingside. The g7 pawn is under attack, and if you don't want to play something like f6, you, you castle here. So Magnus castles, and Nepo uh, castles queen side. So castles queen side, and now rook to e8. Puts pressure on the e4 pawn, but this uh, pretty much only helps Nepo because he wants to start expanding on the king side, so f3 will help him do just that. He wants to start pushing these pawns. Uh, we have bishop to e6 by Magnus, and now uh, bishop to b5, putting pressure on the knight here. Uh, you, you could you could win a pawn here maybe, but uh, I don't know how uh, how good it would be for white to, to give black the open file. So here, bishop back to d7, uh, Magnus decides to defend it, and here Nepo starts pushing with h4. So now, of course, you want to play h5, h6, uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure here, uh, but Magnus plays a6 instead. So here, uh, Nepo, what Nepo should do is go back with the bishop, bishop e2, 
uh, slow down uh, Carlson's counterplay on the queen side and then uh, continue pushing his pawns on the king side. However, Nepo goes to bishop to a4 and Magnus takes this opportunity to open up the queen side by giving up a pawn. So here b5 is played, bishop to b3 and now a5. So preparing to push uh, b4 or a4 if uh, Nepo doesn't stop it. So here he plays a3. A4 was also a possibility, but he decides to go for A3, and Magnus now busts open the position by sacrificing a pawn. So B4, captures on B4, we have captures, and now a trade of knights. Captures, captures, and captures, uh, and now uh, you could go for Rook to A1 check, but for the moment it doesn't really do all that much. King just moves, and uh, well, you can just trade off one of your attackers, which is not something you want to do. So Magnus starts with Bishop to E6. Now puts pressure on the bishop here and uh, Nepo trades it with bishop captures, rook captures and now queen back to c3. You could also uh, play king to b1 uh, but then c5 could be annoying if the if the white queen moves and you allow the black queen to land on a5, white could be in trouble. So instead we have queen to c3. Here Nepo is preparing to play b3 so the queen would gain control of the a1 square so you don't have to worry about rook to a1. And, uh, of course, uh, here we have h5. Magnus uh, doesn't want to allow Nepo to push h5. And now, uh, you, if black wants to continue pushing, he's going to have to play something like g4. So here we have b3, gaining control of the a1 square, like we said. And now comes rook to g6. Magnus goes after the g3 pawn. And Nepo continues with f4. Uh, grabs more space on the king side, while uh, the queen now guards the g3 pawn. So here, rook to a6. Now, uh, if white... If white plays a slow move, then Magnus can play uh, queen to a8, and then you can uh, play some like rook to a1. So king b2. Now uh, queen to a8 would be met with uh, rook to a1, so we'd just get everything traded uh, along the a-file. Not something Magnus is looking to do, so here he goes rook to e6. Again, putting pressure on the e4 pawn, and Nepo defends it with queen to c4. Uh, we have queen to f6, this is how Magnus brings the queen into the game, and Nepo of course defends it with uh, c3. So uh, Nepo is up a pawn, uh, his position is great, however his king is a bit loose here uh, on b2. Uh, but okay, rook back to a8 by Magnus, now preparing to shift the rook over here to put even more pressure on the e4 pawn, and rook h to e1. Uh, Nepo now defends it, also rook to a1 was possible to just either trade uh, a pair of rooks or gain control of the a-file. Uh, but okay, queen e7, now uh, there could be a lot of pressure on the pawn here, also Magnus guards the c pawn here. And uh, in some lines, uh, d5 is also a threat, just uh, trying to give up a pawn to gain access to the a3 square. And this is uh, what Nepo figures out, and he stops the push of the pawn with rook to d5. But this is one of those cases where you've stopped something, but, but not really. So uh, feel free to pause the video here and find the best move for Magnus, uh, taking into consideration everything I just said, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting the beautiful C6 idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's C6. Uh, like I said, you have to get rid of the rook and allow black to push the pawn to d5. And uh, well, while the queen can capture here, the point is that uh, you're threatening everything here. You're threatening the rook. Uh, you're threatening if the rook moves to play d5. You're also threatening queen a7 followed by just... Uh, uh, crushing down with the queen. So while queen captures on c6 is possible, uh, queen a7 is incredibly strong here. And now it's hard for white to find the defense. There is a defense uh, rook to d2 with the idea that if queen uh, goes down, then you can maybe wiggle out with the king. But good luck finding this in a, in a rapid game where Nepo is already very low on time. Another thing you could do is just capture with the rook, but then you uh, this is met with d5. The, uh, the queen is under attack, also queen is coming to a3. There is no stopping this, it's just game over. So here, Nepo played rook to d4. Uh, he's prepared for d5, but also uh, the, the pawn is now nicely defended. So Magnus continues with the d5, and now queen to e2. Uh, keeping the pawn defended, and here Magnus says, okay, you can play queen a3 check, but you don't really have anything here. So here uh, we have queen to a3 check, also c5 was a possibility, just trying to uh, get rid of this rook, but uh, queen a3 is sufficient, because if you play something like this, captures and captures, then rook uh, e to a6, and then again, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just game over. 
Uh, but okay, Magnus goes for the straightforward queen a3 check. We have king to c2 and now queen to a2 with check. We have king to d3 and now queen captures on b3. And here, Nepo's king is uh, not, uh, not feeling all that great. Uh, you have to play something here. Nepo played queen to c2, offered a queen trade, and Magnus has a uh, well, uh, uh, you know, he, he can choose to move the queen anywhere. He can play queen to b5, he can play queen to b6, queen to b7. All of these moves are great for white and uh, 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 great for black, and also winning for black. However, uh, Magnus played instead of all of these moves, Magnus played queen to b4, and he allowed Nepo to capture it with the rook or with the pawn. Now, why would Magnus play such a move? Well, uh, it's an online game, it's played via a computer, and uh, sometimes your mouse will just uh, either go crazy or you will just drop a piece uh, if, if you know. Uh, uh, it, sometimes it just happens and this is one unfortunate uh, game where it happened for Magnus and it couldn't be uh, you know it, it's super important game super important tournament so it's a terrible way to start uh, but here Magnus said uh, in an interview later that he was afraid that because he blundered the queen like this that uh, Nepo would offer a draw and he didn't want to draw like this uh, so Magnus instantly resigned after he played queen to b4 uh, without even giving Nepo the opportunity to offer a draw because Nepo knew he was losing so he probably would have offered a draw here but Magnus resigned and uh, he didn't allow it. So uh, not, not a great start for Magnus, but an excellent start for Nepo, uh, taking down the world champion uh, in, in the first round here. And uh, like I said, uh, the, the players are fighting to finish in the top eight and reach the knockout stage after two more days uh, of uh, rapid chess. So this was the first day and we will have two more days and we will show the standings now as I don't know if I will uh, get a chance to show any more games from day one. Uh, but just in case I don't, here are the standings. So after first day, uh, the, uh, the number one player is Anish Giri with four out of five points, three wins and two draws. And then followed by Magnus Carlsen and David Anton Giharo, who played uh, incredible uh, chess. And as you can see, Magnus uh, started with this terrible loss against Nepo, but uh, still managed to reach second place with three and a half out of five. Uh, so then we have uh, with three points Wesley So, Yanni Pomni, Shilevan Aronian, and Hikaru Nakamura. With two and a half, Alireza Firuja and Ding Liren. With two points, Yang Shishtov Duda, Lequang Liam, uh, Peter Svidler, and Maxim Vashel Lagrav. With a point and a half, Temo Rajabov and uh, Vidit Gujarati. And with one point, Sergei Karyakin. Now you might think, okay, some of these points, uh, some of these players should definitely have more points. But when you have 16 incredible players, someone has to have, you know, not all that many points, and someone has to be last. And incredible uh, start for David Anton Kiharo, who is the uh, lowest seed of the tournament and uh, currently in third place, uh, sh shared third, uh, shared second basically, uh, with Magnus Carlsen. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the the first game uh, we've shown. We're, we're, we're gonna show. And uh, yeah, it was a great game. Uh, Magnus uh, decided to go for the Cozio defense, which is a very extremely rare. And Nepo really took his time trying to trying to fight it. But in the end, uh, Magnus uh, was winning. But then uh, this just happens, and we, we have to get used to it. I mean, the more games that we're we're going to have online, uh, the more mouse slips there will be. And we already discussed uh, how to deal with mouse slips in the previous video, where we had the mouse slip. So we're not going to cover it here, but as usual, I'm always interested in, in your thoughts. So uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Michael Kelberer, uh, Boris Milenkovic, Hector Coronado, Todd Victor, and Killian Krebs for contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Skilling Open, checking up uh, on your wonderful suggestions and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.